I can say with utter confidence that we wouldn't be in business if we hadn't invested with Star. If it wasn't for the versatility that's available on the, these machines, we would struggle to pick up some of the new customers that we have. Martin, you said you wouldn't possibly be in business today if it hadn't have been for your investment in Star's technology. Where did it all start? Tell us about the company and that journey. Well, the company is long established since 1941. Um, established in the war to make aerospace parts of well, it wasn't called aerospace then. <laughs> um, the it's a little jobbing shop which bought a cam auto company, but in the middle mid 80s, uh, we evolved in terms of size mainly on the back of uh, the Midland Automotive customer base uh, to a size where we moved to this facility some 25 years ago. When we moved here, uh, the BMW took over the Rover franchise uh, and that saw huge changes that affected us quite markedly. Where Land Rover used to make all their own transmissions, gearboxes, engines, we supplied into that basic turn part in volume uh, requirement um, without really having to do anything too complicated. That all changed on or about the millennium where we saw huge changes in our business and huge decreases in volume work from the automotive which had been our traditional customer base. We invested first in 2003 in a star and it was a very hard decision for us to make. It was what seemed to be a huge capital outlay at the time, somewhere akin to buying a house back in 2003 and very hard to justify on paper. But we took the plunge in 2003 buying a brand new Star SR20 and with Star Micronics support and help we soon came to use the machine and realised it wasn't as fearsome as we first thought. So much so that we bought two more brand new SR20s in 2004. So we suddenly found ourselves within a 12 to 18 month period of having three very versatile, very capable machines which we had a portfolio of parts already where those secondary operations could be immediately brought to bear on a machine that would give us one hit machining. So was this when you talked then about the versatility of the machines, this enabled you to adapt your company, it enabled you to approach new opportunities and new customers to, to really recover from what was a difficult time? It certainly was a difficult time and the word recovery is absolutely right. Um, the, the versatility of the machines allowed us to start looking at work that we could never conceivably have done before. So this is degrees of complexity that we would have shied away from, either because we wouldn't have known how to approach it, it would have been too costly for the volumes that were required, and let us get away from that highish volume, low margin automotive parts into more profitable, more complex, but at the same time lower volume market that we almost were aware of but didn't know how to get into. Okay, so we're now almost 20 years on or just less than. Where is the business today and how, how different does it look compared to what it did then? Well, certainly from the automotive side where we were probably 80-85% automotive uh, in 2003 when we bought our first star, that's almost flipped on its head. We're probably sub 20% automotive and now do sort of some hugely diverse markets from hardware, locks and latches, leisure. Uh, we still do all automotive, of course, um, but general engineering, yellow goods, but the diversity is, is enormous. Um, it also means that we're not reliant on one or two large key customers, but our customer base has increased three or fourfold, uh, which gives us a lot of comfort, to be honest. And with your success and, and, and change of direction, that's been a success for Star as well. You now have over 20 machines in here. Um, tell us about that staged journey, because in, in that's almost over a machine a year. It is, and we've done a combination of buying new as regularly and as often as we can. We've also used Star for their second-hand machines that come available. So we've, off the top of my head, probably bought four or five or six second-hand machines directly from Star, and also through company acquisitions, targeted acquisitions. Uh, I think in 2005 we bought a small company that had five stars. So on our journey from 2003 we went from having one to three to eight within quite a short period of time. Um, and that also then gave us a lot more confidence. Uh, we got machines which we knew what we were dealing with. So back in, in 2007 we then went for a larger model. So we bought two new SR32s which took us to a 
a different level in terms of physical size of components we could attack. And now you have uh, a wide variety of their machines. What does that allow you to offer to the marketplace when companies are looking for machining? How much of these machines change and how adaptable are you as a business? The, the, the amount of machines that we've got for startup allows us to do pretty much all sorts of volumes. What we tend to find is a lot. our average um, quantity would probably be somewhere around 1,500 or 2,000 parts. And we tend to stock as well. So we have an active, free to our customers, stockholding policy. So if they want 100 parts, 200 parts, we'll probably make 1,000 parts and hold them in stock for them at our volition for them to call off. That gives us operational advantage. We can set a machine up, allow it to run for a, a night or two, uh, rather than having to be changing over and have so much downtime on the machines. Having the stars really has given us the, the versatility to, for any of our customers, we can do anything they want. And that means they haven't got to choose between two or three different subcontractors. We can be the one that they go to, to give them everything they need. And off the top of my head, I, think of, I can think of about 24 very good reasons why we'd uh, pick star. <laughs>